This is a video about glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. This is an educational video intended for healthcare providers and is not meant to replace clinical judgment. This video will teach you how glucocorticoids affect blood glucose levels, about the risk factors for developing glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia, how to recognize the complications of severe glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia, and strategies to treat glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. There are several different terms people use to describe the hyperglycemia caused by glucocorticoids, including steroid-induced diabetes, glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia, and in the case of an organ transplant, new-onset diabetes after transplant. In fact, these terms are very similar. They all refer to the high blood sugars that people may develop after taking glucocorticoids, even those who do not have pre-existing diabetes. In this video, we will use the term glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia to refer to all instances of hyperglycemia caused by glucocorticoids. What are glucocorticoids? Glucocorticoid medications are a type of steroid, specifically a corticosteroid, that inhibit the body's immune response and reduce inflammation. The name glucocorticoid is partially derived from the effect of these steroids on glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids are widely prescribed in order to treat conditions such as asthma, lupus, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and rheumatoid arthritis. Often, glucocorticoids are also prescribed as part of cancer treatment or given to patients after they have had an organ transplantation in order to prevent rejection of the donated organ. There are many types of glucocorticoids that are commonly prescribed. Generally, glucocorticoids are grouped into short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting. Some commonly prescribed examples of glucocorticoids include hydrocortisone, which lasts between 8 to 12 hours, prednisone, which lasts between 12 to 36 hours, and dexamethasone, which lasts between 36 to 72 hours. So what is the link between glucocorticoids and blood glucose levels? Hyperglycemia is one of the most common and most severe side effects of glucocorticoid use. In those with pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes, glucocorticoids can increase blood sugar levels and make them much more challenging to manage. Studies have shown that over half of all patients receiving high-dose glucocorticoids in hospital will develop hyperglycemia. Even 19 to 32 percent of patients without diabetes will unexpectedly develop hyperglycemia when given higher doses of glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids cause hyperglycemia through several different mechanisms. They can add glucose into the bloodstream by increasing gluconeogenesis, which is the process through which the liver produces glucose increasing appetite and carbohydrate intake, and enhancing the effects of hormones such as glucagon and epinephrine, which in turn promote glucose production. Glucocorticoids also decrease the amount of glucose being removed from the bloodstream by inhibiting the production and secretion of insulin so that there is less insulin available to lower blood sugar levels. Glucocorticoids also decrease insulin sensitivity, which is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance impairs the ability of muscle and other tissues in the body to take up and use glucose in the blood. Without enough insulin, or when the body is resistant to the action of insulin, blood glucose levels rise. For those without pre-existing diabetes, the risk of developing glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia depends on a combination of factors, including the dose of glucocorticoid, the duration of glucocorticoid treatment, and the presence of any pre-existing risk factors for type 2 diabetes, such as a personal or family history of glucose intolerance, high body mass index, advanced age, and previous signs of insulin resistance. While very high doses of glucocorticoids pose the greatest risk of hyperglycemia, 
It is important to note that even small doses can affect blood sugars, particularly if one has pre-existing diabetes risk factors. Patients who are prescribed glucocorticoids after an organ transplant are a particularly vulnerable group and need to be monitored closely for hyperglycemia. Glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia post-transplant has been associated with several complications, including reduced survival, rejection of the transplanted organ, a higher risk of infection, and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. It is very important that glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia be treated in a timely manner because even short-term hyperglycemia can lead to these complications. So how is glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia treated? What strategies can you use to prevent these complications? There are four important steps to managing glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. Prepare. It is important to prepare patients for the possibility of glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. Prepare your patients to recognize the symptoms of hyperglycemia, and for those who already have diabetes, for the possibility that their blood sugars may get much more difficult to manage. Monitor. Teach patients to monitor their blood sugar levels frequently after beginning glucocorticoid treatment in order to check for hyperglycemia. It may take several days after starting these medications to see evidence of hyperglycemia, and some types of glucocorticoids do not raise blood sugar levels at all hours of the day. To avoid missing any potential evidence of hyperglycemia, patients should monitor their blood sugar levels for many days after starting glucocorticoid treatment, and ideally, at the time of day when the drug is predicted to be at its peak effect. Treat. Because hyperglycemia can be severe, insulin is generally the most effective treatment. By themselves, oral agents such as metformin are often not effective in treating severe glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. The most important principle for using insulin in this setting is to match the type of insulin with the predicted effect of the glucocorticoid that has been prescribed. Make sure to consider the type, dosage, frequency, and route of glucocorticoid administration, as these can all have varying effects on blood sugar levels. Empower. Empower patients to treat glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia themselves. Teach them when and how often to test their blood sugar levels, how to recognize the symptoms of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia, and how to adjust their insulin. For example, Changes in the dose of glucocorticoid or changes in appetite may necessitate a change in the dose of insulin. Here are some insulin treatment strategies that apply to the most commonly prescribed glucocorticoids. Example 1. Prednisone. Prednisone is a very commonly prescribed intermediate-acting glucocorticoid. It starts to raise blood sugars approximately 4 hours after administration. Hyperglycemia usually peaks at around 8 hours, but the effects can linger for up to 16 hours. If we look at the effects of prednisone on blood glucose levels, we see that a morning dose of prednisone will typically lead to hyperglycemia in the afternoon and early evening. Blood sugars fall to normal overnight as the prednisone is cleared from the body. Although research is limited regarding specific treatment recommendations, Based on our clinical experience, we have found that intermediate-acting insulin appears to be a good match for the effects of once-daily prednisone administration when given at the same time. This is because the effects of intermediate-acting insulin, also known as NPH insulin, closely mirrors the action of prednisone. Like prednisone, the blood sugar-lowering effects of intermediate-acting insulin peak around 8 hours later and last up to 15 hours. Typically, Patients will be started on low doses of insulin, blood glucose levels will be observed, and then insulin dosages will be titrated upwards until target evening blood sugars are reached. Here is a table of recommended starting dosages of NPH insulin that can be used to treat prednisone-induced hyperglycemia. When using this table, please keep in mind that insulin dosage will need to be adjusted and will vary between patients. Example 2 Dexamethasone. Dexamethasone is a long-acting glucocorticoid. Based on preliminary research, dexamethasone's hyperglycemic effects have been shown to begin around 4 hours after administration 
and can last for 24 to 36 hours. Dexamethasone is often given twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Because of its long duration of action and twice a day dosing, blood sugars are high all the time, day and night. Based on our clinical experience, we have found that long-acting basal insulin preparations, such as insulin glargine and detamir, are good matches for the prolonged hyperglycemia from dexamethasone. Here is a table of recommended starting dosages of insulin glargine or detamir that can be used to treat dexamethasone-induced hyperglycemia. When using this table, please keep in mind that insulin dosage will need to be adjusted and will vary between patients. Example 3. Adjusting the dose of insulin. The initial dose of insulin will need to be gradually adjusted or extra insulin injections added until a patient's blood sugars fall to an acceptable level. Here is an example of somebody taking a morning dose of prednisone. Intermediate acting NPH insulin is given in the morning along with the dose of prednisone, but the insulin causes hypoglycemia to develop midday. To combat this hypoglycemia, the dose of insulin is reduced. However, because of the reduction in insulin, hyperglycemia in the late afternoon and evening persists. This is addressed by the addition of another injection of rapid-acting bolus insulin at lunchtime, which helps prevent the spike in blood sugars later in the day when the effect of the prednisone is peaking. How is glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia treated for those with pre-existing diabetes? Those with pre-existing type 2 diabetes whose blood sugars are managed with oral medications may need to take insulin once they begin glucocorticoid treatment. Those with pre-existing diabetes who are already on insulin will need to increase their insulin intake significantly after starting glucocorticoids. Sometimes glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia can be so severe that a hyperglycemic emergency may occur. These emergencies include diabetic ketoacidosis and a hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state. Symptoms of these emergencies include polyuria or frequent urination, polydipsia or extreme thirst, fever, confusion, seizures, and coma, all in the presence of extremely high blood sugars, often well above 20 millimoles per liter. Those experiencing a hyperglycemic emergency must be immediately referred to the hospital as they need urgent treatment with intravenous fluids and insulin. What about using oral hypoglycemic agents to treat glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia? There is not a lot of evidence to support the use of oral hypoglycemic agents to treat glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia, particularly when high doses of steroids are being used. These agents are usually not strong or fast-acting enough to treat extremely high blood sugars. However, oral hypoglycemic agents can sometimes be considered as an alternative to insulin treatment if and when the glucocorticoid dose is lowered to a more physiologic level and then only if one's liver and kidneys are functioning well. You may be wondering, is glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia permanent for those without pre-existing diabetes? Once glucocorticoids are reduced or discontinued, it's possible that blood glucose levels may normalize, but in many cases, hyperglycemia can persist, leading to type 2 diabetes. This usually happens when glucocorticoids are prescribed to those who are at high risk for diabetes to begin with, often those with previous insulin resistance or glucose intolerance. Even if blood glucose levels normalize after glucocorticoids are discontinued, these individuals are at risk for developing type 2 diabetes in the future, and so it is important to periodically monitor for type 2 diabetes by measuring fasting blood sugar and hemoglobin A1c levels. We hope that this video has helped you learn how to recognize and treat glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. In summary, glucocorticoids can lead to severe hyperglycemia in patients both with and without pre-existing diabetes. Prepare patients for the possibility of glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia 
and empower them to monitor their own blood sugar levels. Subcutaneous insulin is the best treatment for glucocorticoid-induced hyperglycemia. Choose insulin type to match the predicted effects of the prescribed glucocorticoid. And finally, Intravenous insulin and fluids are needed when glucocorticoids cause such severe hyperglycemia that diabetic ketoacidosis or a hyperglycemic hyperosmolar state ensues.